Well, cardiac MRI is a specialist cardiac investigation that uses a technology of MRI, which is essentially radio waves, uh, a magnet and a computer, to produce detailed um, moving images of the heart, almost unparalleled resolution that we can't get with any other investigation and enables us to answer questions that we could not answer before. Um, the good thing about cardiac MRI, it doesn't use ionizing radiation, so it is safe. Um, it's a non-invasive technique and it can answer essentially a multitude of questions. Well, before you have the test, the, uh, the radiographers will be asking you a simple questionnaire. Essentially, these are safety questionnaires. For example, do you have a pacemaker, um, which precludes you from having a uh, cardiac MR? Um, well, so, and this is just a short questionnaire. Essentially, it's a just safety questionnaire. So once that's all fine, um, you'll lie on a bed in the scanner, and we'll put some electrodes on you, and also some other equipment. Um, the scan can take a long time. It can take about 60 minutes. Um, and it's important that you lie still, and it's important that, uh, that we, you tolerate the breath hold instructions that we give. Um, most of the time it, is, it is, is absolutely fine, it's safe, but if, for example, you're anxious or you're claustrophobic, um, that is being scared of small spaces, then it's important to let us know, but most of the time it is fine, and the radiographers and, and myself will be there every step of the way if there are any problems. Well, cardiac MRI, just because of the resolution that it offers and the fact that it, the detailed picture that we can get of the heart, um, it, it means that we can answer questions that um, we couldn't answer before. We can answer, for example, the structure and function of the heart. When we mean function, we mean how well the heart is beating. Um, we can do this to quite a high degree of accuracy, better than any other investigations. Um, people who have had, or patients who may have had a heart attack in the past, who may need, to, who may want to know is revascularization, or i.e., should we treat them? Um, cardiac is very good to assess how much damage the patient may have had to the heart, and essentially answer how much of the heart is alive and how much is irreversibly scarred. Um, we can also look at the blood flow to the heart. By that means people who have coronary artery disease may have chest pain and the cause of this is ischemia because of the imbalance between the demand and oxygen to the heart. Uh, can we, uh, we can actually assess the blood flow to the heart muscle very accurately. Um, we, by doing this we would have to give a drug called an adenosine which stresses the heart, it replicates the conditions of exercise. Um, and during this time, we can actually see how well the myocardium is perfusing. And we can do this to a high degree of accuracy, probably better than any other investigation out there. We can also assess um, heart muscle disease, so primary heart muscle disease. These range from uh, inherited to inflammatory, what we call myocarditis, to infiltrative forms. So we can do this very well. And cardiac MR is probably the gold standard in assessing heart muscle disease, a term that we use, cardi term that we use cardiomyopathy. So here are some examples of a cardiac MRI examination. And you can see here, we've got some beautiful pictures of the heart. And the resolution that we have here is unparalleled to any investigation that we have. This is a four-chamber view. So here we can see the, the left ventricle. This is the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, and this is the right atrium. And we can see how well the heart is pumping, how well the heart is beating. So we can nicely assess the function. This is another view. This is what we call the two-chamber view. And here we can see the left ventricle. This is the blood pool. This is the myocardium here contracting. And this is the left atrium. And this is the mitral valve here. And we can see that very nicely. And we can answer, just by looking at this, a lot of questions to say, well, how well is the heart doing? If in this example here, if we compare it to the previous examination, we can see here that the anterior wall here, this part, is very thin and is not moving at all. We know this patient um, may have sustained a, um, a heart attack in the past, and what the clinician would want to know is, is it worth revascularizing? How much of the heart um, is, a, is alive and how much is irreversibly scarred? And we can see here that this is not contracting well at all. It is, it is almost still. And when we give contrast, 
we give a contrast agent, which is a dye called gadolinium. This accumulates in anywhere that is scarred, in anywhere of the part of the myocardium that is fibrotic. And we can see here that that part of the myocardium that wasn't contracting well is all enhancing. So this is all dead tissue. This is irreversibly scarred tissue. So it would not be worthwhile to revascularize in this case, um, but there would be other potential um, treatment that would, would benefit this patient. If I show you another example here, this is what we call a short axis view. This is a cross section of the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. And if you can see here, the heart is beating okay, but just in this inferior part of the heart and the lateral part of the left ventricle, we can see that the, it is not contracting as well as the other parts of the myocardium. And I mentioned before about blood flow. Well, this is how we assess blood flow. The images at the top are resting images. The images at the bottom are stress imaging. And when we how we stress the heart, we give a drug called adenosine, and this replicates the, um, the uh, similarities of what happens when you're under exercise. And we can see here that under stress, this part of the myocardium, the inferior and lateral wall, that wasn't contracting very well, it's perfusing very poorly. So this patient has ischemia. And we can show this, not, we can only not answer the question, but we can actually show the amount of ischemia to a high degree of accuracy. We could then answer the next question, well, how much of the myocardium is actually alive? And we can see here that there's maybe a little bit of enhancement here, that inferior wall, but essentially all of this myocardium is, is, is alive, so it would be worth revascularizing. So we've answered m many questions. We've answered how much blood flow is going to the heart. We've answered how, which part of the myocardium is not perfusing well. And we've also able to answer the clinician's question of how much of the heart is alive. This is a different patient, um, another example, again, a short axis view. And we can see here, this is the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle, and we can see it contracting. Just, we can see some subtle abnormalities here in the lateral and inferior wall. And this patient who presented with a flu-like illness um, had very bad chest pain. And it was very similar to patients who we would think would have a heart attack, but his coronary arteries were normal. So we were, the clinician was slightly puzzled as what could have caused this. Um, we went on to do more uh, sequences. This is a special tissue characterization sequence. And we can see this high signal here. And this is edema. This is fluid that has built up in that part of the, of the heart. And that tells us this is an acute insult. But now we need to know the question of what is it? Has he had a heart attack? How can he have had a heart attack if his coronaries are normal? Um, and, but what we can see here is actually there is a lot of scar here when we give contrast, but it is sparing the inner part of the myocardium and affecting really the outer part of the myocardium. And this is an inflammatory cause. This is a myocarditis. So this is an infection that's affected the, uh, that affected the heart. Um, just to bear in mind that I mentioned to you before that the coronary arteries are normal. How can patients have a heart attack? They still can do, so we can't ex absolutely exclude that. But in this case, we can see that the cause of the, of the chest pain was an infection of the heart, not a, not a heart attack. So we can actually distinguish between the two. And cardiac is if, if probably the only investigation that can do that. If we look at this example, this we can see here that the heart muscle is much more thickened than, uh, than normal. Um, it is grossly thickened. And if we look at a different view, the heart muscle is thickened so much that it is narrowing this part here. The heart is trying to pump blood out, but it can't because it's being obstructed because of the thickening of the muscle. And this itself is an inherited form of a cardiomyopathy, and this is called a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and there are obstructive features here. So this is very important. Cardiac is very good at assessing this. Um, we can also give contrast, and we can see here that there is in that hypertrophied muscle a lot of enhancement. So there's scarring here as well. So this is very important information uh, to give to uh, the clinician. And cardiac MR is, is very good at uh, looking at uh, cardiomyopathies, diseases of the heart muscle. This is another example here. We can see the heart muscle is thickened, but it is thickened in different to the previous example in that it is quite symmetrical. 
Um, when we give contrast, in this case, we can see that the whole of the heart is enhancing. And this patient has a cardiomyopathy, but this is a infiltrative form, and this is an infiltrative form due to amyloid. Importantly, cardiac MR can help guide risky therapies. These, for example, are bypass, um, angioplasty, um, people who, who need cardiac defibrillators. We can make sure that those treatments are better targeted. It therefore means that the right patient receives the correct treatment at the right time and allowing a better patient journey. Well, afterwards, what we'd um, do is, the, once the study is finished, um, we'd have a look at the images, make sure that everything is fine. Before we actually take the patient off the table, we'll make sure that we've got all the information that we need. For example, do we need to do any more sequences? Once that's all fine, a report will be generated. That will be by myself. Be, I'll be looking at the images in, in detail and providing a report to the clinician um, who referred you to this test in the first place.